In class the other day, we discussed natural selection. One phrase that came up was survival of the fittest. While this statement does provide some insight into how natural selection works, it also conveys an implication that organisms produced by natural selection are ruthless, cruel, and oriented only towards a selfish survival instinct. This naive assumption contradicts a lot of what we see in nature, as well as much of our own human experience. But what does natural selection select for or against? Is it the species? Is it the social group? Is it the individual? Or is it the genes? Remember that for natural selection to work, favorable traits which increase an organism's fitness must be heritable. If something isn't heritable, it can't lead to natural selection. You have all of your genes, but there are other individuals who are more likely to share gene you're more likely to share genes with, your family. First, we need to talk about relatedness. Relatedness, which we abbreviate with the letter R, is the average proportion of genes you share with another individual. Your relatedness to a random non-relative in the population is set to zero, while your relatedness to a clone of yourself would be one because your clone shares all of your genes. In the context of family, you received half of your genes from your mother and the other half from your father. Therefore, you have a relatedness of 0.5 to each of them. If you have a full sibling, they also received half of their genes from your mother and the other half from your father. Because of meiosis, you and your sibling have on average half the same genes as one another, and thus have a relatedness of 0.5. Now imagine your sibling reproduced with a non-relative and produced several children. You and your sibling share a relatedness of 0.5, and you and their partner have a relatedness of zero. Therefore, you have a relatedness of 0.25 to each of your nieces and nephews. We've discussed the number of offspring as a good measure of biological fitness. This is a measure of direct fitness. Another way to think about biological fitness is the abundance of your genes in the next generation. In this sense, the reproductive success of your relatives can provide you with indirect fitness gains, even if you don't reproduce yourself. This theory, which is known as kin selection, has shed a great deal of light on the evolution of social behavior, cooperation, and altruistic behavior such as group or territory defense.